Hi and welcome to this, our second program from the Reaction Kinetics Unit. Today I want to take a look at something called reaction mechanisms. And here I have several features of the mechanism that I want to show you. Let's consider a reaction like the synthesis of ammonia. That requires nitrogen and three hydrogens. Now the chances of the three particles coming together, or should say four particles coming together simultaneously in the same space is fairly remote. And hence we turn to the concept of mechanisms, which is a way of expressing a reaction as a series of simpler elementary steps. Each of those steps involves usually unimolecular or bimolecular processes. Unimolecular meaning one substance decomposing or breaking apart and bimolecular, two particles colliding. Now you can have more than that, they're just less likely. So I'm going to take this reaction and break it down to some simpler steps. Suppose in our first step we have a nitrogen colliding with a hydrogen. This would be called a bimolecular step, two particles colliding. And they make a temporary intermediate species of this configuration, nitrogen and one hydrogen and two of them. It's unlikely this is a stable arrangement. Now, this temporary intermediate species can then react in a next step. So perhaps this NH species collides with a hydrogen and produces one of our desired ammonia. Now this step will happen twice because I have two of these species present. So this would be considered a reaction mechanism, each step in the mechanism involving a unimolecular or bimolecular process. Now, we check what the steps add up to. So if I sum up this, the two NH will cancel with those two, and the overall process then would be two nitrogens. Now two times this will give me, and plus the one up there will give me three hydrogens, and I have again the two times this will produce two ammonia. So I've met the second criteria that the elementary steps must add up to the overall reaction. The slowest step determines the rate law expression. Consider if you will the act of purchasing a snack at a grocery store you frequently visit. You have to enter the grocery store, find the snack, pay for the snack and leave the grocery store. These are sort of the actions you have to go through. On the day you arrive, it's five o'clock in the afternoon and quite busy, and there turns out to be one cashier available. As you walk into the store, you quickly find your groceries because you've been there before. You then line up to pay, and there's seven or eight people in line. Eventually you get through and pay for the snack and then leave the grocery store. This step, the paying for snack, really determines how quickly you can leave and enter the store. Similarly, in a mechanism, one of the steps is usually the slowest. If, for instance, I said that this step here was the slowest, it required the greatest activation energy, and these other steps were considered to be fast, then what would happen is this step would determine the rate. And not only determine the rate, determine the rate law expression. So the rate law for this proposed mechanism would say it's the concentration of nitrogen, one of them, so the exponent here would be one, colliding with one hydrogen. So this would be a rate law expression consistent with this one being the slowest step. So a mechanism needs to fulfill these three requirements. Let's look at some others. We want to design a mechanism consistent with this information. Nitrogen oxide colliding with water to make hydrogen and nitrogen dioxide. So that's the overall reaction. My steps have to total up this and we're given this. The slowest step looks like it involves two nitrogen oxides colliding. I'm going to begin with my slowest step when I design my mechanism. So the first step, I think, involves nitrogen oxide colliding with nitrogen oxide. And again, I get that from this idea here. It says that two nitrogen oxides must collide. That's my slowest step. 
and I'm going to say that they collide and let's say they create some temporary intermediate species like this. So that's step number one. Now in my proposed mechanism I'm going to say that intermediate species breaks apart producing one of my desired products which is nitrogen um, dioxide and at the same time produces a nitrogen. In step three that nitrogen then collides with a water molecule producing another nitrogen oxide and hydrogen. This I've already identified as being my slowest step in my mechanism from here. Let's check what the total is when we add this all up. That one will cancel with that one. The nitrogen will cancel with that nitrogen. And this nitrogen oxide will cancel with this nitrogen oxide. So my overall reaction, if I look at what's left, nitrogen oxide, water, producing nitrogen dioxide, and hydrogen. So indeed I have a match with my overall equation. So this would be an acceptable mechanism consistent with this experiment. Now what this would look like on an energy diagram is step number one, let's say, here it is, nitrogen oxide plus nitrogen oxide. This being the slowest step, I'm going to have it with the highest activation energy, so it's got a big hill to climb. And that then produces my temporary intermediate species. That species now breaks apart in a faster step, so I'll give it a slower hill and leveling off to produce the nitrogen oxide and another temporary intermediate species. This then also happens fast, reacts with water, so I'll bring some water in at this point. And we finish up finally with our final step where we have nitrogen oxide and hydrogen. Now, this height here, recall, is our activation energy. And our slowest step typically has the highest activation energies, whereas for step number two and step number three, I have smaller activation energies. In my last example, I want to determine both the overall reaction and the rate law expression for this. So these are my two steps that are proposed. So the first thing I'm going to do is add these up to determine the overall reaction. There's the temporary intermediate species that cancels. So the reaction overall is 2NO plus O2 producing two nitrogen dioxide. Now, the slowest step will give me my rate. So I would at first go, okay, the rate then would be some constant times the concentration of N2O2. I have one of those colliding with oxygen. Now there is a problem with this rate law expression. This species does not appear here. Remember that the rate law, it would be K times the concentration of NO to some exponent times the concentration of O2 to some exponent. So I do have the exponent right now for at least oxygen, but I do have a problem in that I don't have nitrogen oxide. But if I take a look at how this species is made, which is up here, it results in the collision of one of these with one of these. So I can replace this part with a new constant, and it would be the concentration of NO squared, because that's responsible for making that species, and now times the concentration of oxygen to the 1. So this would be the rate law expression consistent with this information. In our final program, we'll take a closer look 
at Activation Energy. Thanks for watching.